Hey, it's Ashley and I'm back with another haircut tutorial. Today we will be going over a high and tight using a comb, clippers, trimmers, and shears. So stay tuned for the final result and the before and after. Let's get to it. I will be starting with my clippers completely closed and I will be going in and kind of deep bulking. And then once I get to that top of my start line, I will start to kind of taper out my line so that I can go back in easily and fade from there. As you can see, I go all the way back around to double check it and start that nice fade. So my first priority is to debulk and then I go back in and make sure my line is straight and even and fading in to the hair on top. Once you get to that parietal ridge, you can kind of easily just scoop right out of it. So it's always a great starting point for your high and tights. You're going to want to make sure that you are using a good sturdy comb that can pick your hair up very easily and move it around for you, whether it be coarse or thin hair. Your comb is one of your biggest assets in cutting hair, so you want to make sure that you are using the best one for yourself and for your clients. So once I am confident that I kind of have my guideline created for me with my zero guard, I will go back and double check the head for any stragglers. I'll make about two to three passes with my clippers completely closed to save myself time whenever I'm going in with my trimmer work. So I will go ahead and make sure all of that is clean and all of the hair is completely debulked and then I will open my clippers all the way with my clippers halved and go back over what I just went into. This time I'm going to dig a little bit more with my teeth because I know that I am fading right into that closed clipper guard. And since I've previously set myself up already to really easily fade into the top of the head, my half blends really well so I don't have to go back in and try to fade together in between my zero and my half. They are faded together already. So going in with a half guard or a one it just depends on what you would prefer here you can start to bring that fade up a little bit more this is a high and tight so it is supposed to square off on the head so remember you want to keep your clippers with the back flat against the head where you are riding the parietal ridge instead of going in straight with your teeth and then going from there this will give you a really soft fade and keeping the head shape more square. So when you start to dig in with your teeth, you are digging into your parietal ridge. And once you dig into your parietal ridge, you will take the shadow and your fade completely out that you just created. So by keeping this fade, I'm going to go in with a one and a half closed and then I'm gonna go back with it opened and I'm gonna kind of work it on that parietal ridge and plane it up instead of going in so I can keep as much of a shadow so I can keep as much of a fade because we're only working with about an inch to two inches to fade on this parietal ridge whereas whenever you have a lower fade you are you are you're fading in about four inches comparatively so this one's a lot higher your fades a lot smaller and it's a lot more condensed. So you're gonna go in with your two and you're gonna turn it at this 45 degree angle so that you can plane off the parietal ridge, but you can also work the crown of the head so that you aren't left with like this little ball at the crown. You wanna take that off to give more of a square illusion to the haircut and the head. So whereas in a low fade, you would dip it all the way below the crown at the bottom to the occipital bone and it creates an entirely different fade. So for this client, he's going to style his hair spiked up and for that, he wants more of a square look because if I take all of the sides off, then I'm taking away a lot of his shape. 
So I went in and I kind of edited it with a half guard just to make sure I didn't have any lines. And now I'm going in with my trimmers. And this is super important, even in a high and tight. I'm going to curve around the ears and then clean up everything around the neck. I'm gonna clean up the ears. And I like to taper my trimmers all the way into my bold fade. So I'm just gonna go flip my trimmers upside down and kind of give a little bit of a taper into that zero. And then same thing on the other side, I'm gonna go around the ears, I'm gonna clean the ears, and I'm just gonna clean up a little bit on the hairline because the trimmers are a double zero, whereas your clippers are just a zero. So they are gonna be one step shorter than your clippers. I will go ahead and check for any neck hairs on the client and clean that up as well. And once I am done that, I will go ahead and dust the client off, double checking my fade while I am doing this and making sure there's no loose hairs that I need to go ahead and clean up. So we've done two main parts of our haircut already and we have one part left, which would be cutting the top. We've done our clipper work, we've faded. We've done our trimmer work, we've cleaned everything up. We've done all of our dry work. So now we are going to go ahead and spray the top. We're going to evaluate the top of the head while we're doing this. And we're going to check for anything that we want to target first. I found that this client's cowlick was probably my biggest problem area. And if you look closely, you can see me pulling that hair backwards and meeting it at that guy that I've already cut with my two and a half and just blending it together from there. And that's going to give a really effortless blend whenever it's dry. And I can see that this is a little bit heavier on the crown area, so I'm going to kind of give it a little bit of a blend with the other side of my comb that's about a half size. And from there, I'm going to blend using my comb positioned on the parietal ridge and going and pulling it up kind of at a 45 degree angle and cutting from my guide and whatever sticks out needs to go so my guide is at the bottom and i am cutting everything that is coming out towards the top at this 45 degree angle again just working up the head and then i almost start to work the hair at a 180 going into the top and making sure that everything blends really well so i'm still at the 45 right now and i'm using my fingers just to double check everything's even and then cross checking over that pulling everything up and using the back that i've already cut as my guide and then i'm working that up onto the crown of the head towards the front and then i'm going to go ahead and go at that 45 degree angle again on the other side putting my comb at the parietal ridge and using that length at the bottom of my comb as my guide and working it up again right here i am going towards the back using the sides and the back as a guide and starting to get at a 45 degree angle you can see me start to pull it up and go more straight and square and that would be me going at that 180 So I'm just going to pull everything towards the back so that it blends really nice when you push it forward and I'm using my back as a guide. So my bangs aren't cut yet so I, I don't have any length up there to follow. All of my guides are on the sides and at my cowlick. I want to work everything to that so that everything blends really well. I'm checking my corners, I'm point cutting a little bit and then when it gets too short for my fingers I'm going to use my comb and do the exact same thing. Find my guide, find my corner, and cut it. Always following a guide in a haircut. My first guide was my zero, and now I'm at the top using the cowlick and that number two as my guide. Following bringing everything back, I go ahead and cross check it before I go in and cut the bang. So now all I have left really is to cut the front of the hair which is the bangs and a little bit towards the middle of the crown. Because the client pushes his bangs up towards the front, I am going to cut them like that 
and I'm going to pull them up with a slight angle because the front of the head and the crown have a slight dip in difference. When you want to compensate for that, you give a slight angle. And then I'm going to re-wet the hair because it got a little bit dry and I don't want to have a dry cut right now because I want everything very even for this. So cutting the bangs shorter by the client's request, which is fine. I've already done all the blending work, so this wouldn't be a big deal. I'm just going to bring it up and recheck everything to that middle length I just created. Going from left to right in the front and then going and taking that middle section and pulling it all towards one side and I'm using that front as my guide that I just cut all even and then I'm going to push it to the other side and I'm going to use that front as my guide once again. I have a guide in the middle, I have a guide in the front and I'm going to cut it. And so all I am meeting is the front to the middle crown. I've already cut all the back, I've already cut all the sides. And then I will go ahead and cross check. And you can see me just pulling everything, making sure that I'm getting all of the subsections in this haircut. Especially in a pointy spiky haircut, you can really see lines when you have a lot of corners left in the haircut so you don't want to leave that that's why I'm gonna go ahead and cross check and this is gonna take away any of those corners that would be left over from all of the scissor work that I've done even if you do a lot of clipper work especially with clipper work you're gonna leave a lot more of a blunt line instead of a softer line like scissors shears and look how I'm grabbing those corners in this cross check using my comb to make sure everything stays very even and straight. And the client seems super happy and I'm going to go in and just give a little bit of a point cut for texture. This is a lot different than having corners. Corners are heavy and out of place, whereas point cutting is going to give you a little bit of texture and kind of deep bulk areas that are heavier, which the front on anyone is always going to sit heavier if they have a full hairline. And to finish off the haircut, we're going to give an eyebrow trim and a dust off. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and haircut tutorial. Make sure to check out the before and after and like and subscribe.